Hey, what's up, everybody? You are watching On the Town with Tanya, and I'm your host. Thank you so much for checking in with us again this week. We are very excited. Uh, today, we have a special guest. Uh, this comedian you have seen on Def Comedy Jam, Comedy Central. You have seen him oh, for about eight years uh, open up for Mike Tapp um, on tour mm -hmm. with Mike Excuse me. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, he has performed for our troops uh, pretty much everywhere, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So, and yeah. he, by the, by the way, he's from Chicago. Uh, he is one Shot of the funniest time. men. Yes, one of the funniest men I know. And it reminds me of Red Fox. Please give it up for the <laughs> Kenny up? Howell. What's up? Yes, yes, the legendary. What's happening, y'all? How y'all doing? What's, how are you? what's up, Richard? Tanya, how you doing? What's going um, on, Kenny? Excellent. Oh, man, it's a blessing yeah. to come on do your show, man. That's what's up. Uh, thank you so much. I know it's, it's a, a little blessing early. to have you, brother. Yes, it is a true hey, blessing. You know, Richard, that call, that phone call kept me. So I told her, I said, "Well, Richard was on it." I say, and, and we, we 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 clicked in. I was like, "Damn, if he can put that much energy in, I can get my bad ass up and go do the show." <laughs> where, are you at? where are you at right now? I'm I'm out in uh, uh, St. Louis. I'm down in the country. You know oh, where oh, where you got to give up stuff. Yeah, like English. They they don't too much mess with it down here. <laughs> That's the land of all. Look at her heart going over the all. Shit, that child. Do ask me? Do you drink bar? Like bar? Bar? What the hell is that? Beer is what you. That's funny because I was going to ask you about that. That's what I I was going to ask you about that bit because that was my. That's my favorite bit that you do. Oh, for You were dead on. You you killed it. Yes. Yes. Yes, it's and they'd be Especially proud of it too. Yeah. Oh no, they do. Like, well, first there, I was like, and I have a neighbor from Louisiana. Hi, neighbor. Uh, and when you were saying, I oh was yeah, see, dying, and see now like, east, and then east look down south got their own little 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 sayings like clickish. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, like like in Louisiana, they will ask you something and answer it right after it. You going to make groceries? No, I'm going upstairs. Yeah, boy, I'm going to eat that food. Boy, yeah. I thought she was asking me. <laughs> so Louisiana, they got that with the bras and all that. Then down here, we got the R's. And then they say, I talk funny because I'm from Chicago. <laughs> right, right. That's what they ought to go to New York, York, son. They ought to go to New York, son, where y'all use 10 words to get a sentence out, son. So be it. Your true oh, to yeah. life, your front step. I'd be like, damn, dude, I just asked you where the store at. Oh, true to life, son. <laughs> but I used to live up that way, so I like y'all. Y'all got the energy. New York got the energy. I stayed in Jersey. Oh yeah, at B and I was in New York every day. Oh, okay. so I, was in Jersey. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, y'all had. I, I used to, you know, had a ratch. ratch. But we from the ratch. They, well, they they was the go betweens. <laughs> the New York ratch. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, rat so. that. <laughs> It's a rat. Oh no! So Chicago. <laughs> no. Tell me how you went from um, Chicago, um, you know, modest means we'll say, to to where you're at now. How did that? How did you even know that you had a funny moment? Oh, uh, because uh, it was a God scene. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because I I was uh, I grew up in the streets of Chicago. I played ball, and you know, I actually had scholarship to good schools. So I had a little education along with hanging with the hood, and all of them was like mm -hmm. my friends growing up. So even after I did Def Jam and, and was on TV for years, I was hanging out, you know, playing ball every day with the with the disciples and, and hanging out in the club with the, the with the you know the the mole or the you know and, and like actually and then I had met my wife and I didn't think I could have some kids but so I we was I was going back and forth from seeing mm -hmm. her but every day I'm hanging with these guys and somebody getting kidnapped killed but it's just regular wasn't no big deal to it got really serious like one of the heads his name was uh you know abu and and he had just picked me up to take me he was like you're gonna be the next richard pride and he would have me in his club you know and he would have two like two generals on the side of me and they would walk me through the club and i get to roast people and they tell me who i could talk about who i couldn't so and, you know they was just a lot of fun and then he just caught, dropped me off and said uh, meet me at this meet me at the house so about 30 minutes later i'm leaving out to go to this house and then it was breaking news reputed you know gang leader was just murdered i was like damn i would have wow. been right there and then my wife wow. who my wife my now wife called and said yo uh you gonna you know i'm pregnant you're gonna be all the way in all the way out i was like well that's god telling me i got to be out of here 
or you know, I'm some I'm running into something crazy and I need to go down there where the blessing is the baby. So wow. me and her been together ever since. I moved back and forth, though. I still go back to Chicago. I was just living there before the uh pandemic, yeah. you know. Okay. But okay. yeah, but yeah, that's what mm -hmm. brought me down to St. Louis. And I wow. kind of changed, you know. Wow. I, I, I it made me focus more on the career, it made me focus on family. I bought a house, started a business, boom, 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 got a grandstand, you know. So, it, it, you know, you can yeah. tell when you read that fork, that fork in the road, God ain't going to, he going to let you make the decision to do bad, but he going to give you a way to That's go. Right. You know, and if you take right. that road, you know, some, and he always going to have it where you can venture back over if you don't go too far down the fork. Right. So, right. I've been wow. blessed. So, it, I think it saved my life. Mm. So, I say I'm from the Shalu. Definitely, definitely, I agree. And what, what, um, do you remember your, do you remember your first show ever? Like ever, ever. The first show ever? Yeah, newbie. I, like I, right out the box. No, but I remember the first boo because I I don't get booed, you know. Oh. <laughs> I mean, everybody get everybody mm -hmm. get booed, right. but you know them stick with you, right? And yeah, uh, yeah. and I had just started yeah. doing comedy, right? So mm -hmm. they and I was doing good. I had the little ego. I was all right, but but we had a uh, the rap. They had a real rap, big rap show, right? And I was like the comic on the show. So, but the dude that was hosting. It was Naughty by Nature was headlining. We had uh, Ice Cube. We had uh, 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 my man, yeah, from uh, Scarface. You know, it was just a, a whole lineup. Oh, yeah. So I wasn't even supposed to be on the show. But my, but the guy who was trying to manage me, he was throwing the the, the, the show. So he was yeah, like, yeah. "Okay, I'm gonna throw Kenny up. We gonna throw Kenny up right before in between Scarface and Naughty by Nature." You know, and Cube had man, look, this how he brought me out. Cause all my, I had told all the, all the, all the, all the thug niggas on the block, they was there. I was like, yeah, I'm going to be, well, I'm going to be on that. And the dude came out to say, yeah, man, are y'all ready for Naughty by Nature? They was like, yeah. <laughs> he was like, but first, <laughs> I was like, well, but we got a, a, a comedian on the show. He is get up for this nigga. <laughs> and so I can say it, and I was like, "Yeah." They was like, "Boo!" Ooh, 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 ooh. Like the, the boo just started from one side like the wave, and it just booed all the way around ten thousand people. I was like, "Damn, y'all!" And threw the mic, mad. I wanted to go choke the dude. I was mad, but that was the oh, really? that stuck with me. I remember that more than my first time on stage. Wow! <laughs> wow! Because I had only been doing it a year. I had only been in it a year. Wow! Wow! Oof. But sometimes if you train with some of them big dogs, it's like you get instant training quicker than most people. <laughs> yeah, you get, I got through to the edge. But like with me, my whole family is funny, right? When my grandfather found out I was doing comedy, he's like, oh, it's about, about time one of them. Because all my brothers mm -hmm. is funny. Matter of fact, I had a brother do comedy before me. His mm -hmm. name is Terry Howe, and he was successful. He actually get, I get a lot of stuff from him. So like, oh, wow. you know, my father was funny. Red, we love Red Fox. My father was the funniest person I know, then Red Fox. Oh, and I like Richard. Yeah, and that's but, what I was asking. Who, who was your biggest inspiration besides your dad? Oh, Red, Red, by far. Was Red even cuss funny. Yes, because your cadence, <laughs> all your cadence and the way that you time stuff. I was like, wait a minute, this reminds me someone I really remember that I don't see much. Red Fox, that's who it was. Red, that's yeah. him. That's amazing. He cuss funny like my father. My father can cuss and just one cuss word. You be no, shit, get your shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know he was serious but like mm -hmm. i used to just talk and make people laugh and i wouldn't even remember mm -hmm. nothing i said the next day and then like i had a friend in college because i played football in college at illinois state and my boy beef used to just be laughing like oh stop it stop it you ignorant you ignorant and I'm like, i can't help but this was come out this is what i'm seeing and that's how i got the little naturally ignorant slogan but it was only way i could describe my style because i never wrote a joke mm -hmm. i just write subjects you know, right. I would just write my parents and then just start talking. Mm -hmm. And that's how my act is. So I basically my show. Really? And then if it, if it's funny, I keep it. But it, it gives me room to yeah. grow it. Because, you know, jokes like right. you can see a joke this month and then a year later, that joke getting standing old. So jokes is like kids. They, you know, they grow. And then some of them just mm -hmm. get to a peak, but they ain't going to peak. And I always try to make my jokes where I talk. I, I try to have three things funny on everything. So if I say something about my mama, I got to have three things. And then I try to work them until I see which one is the funniest. And then that way, the, the, the one that ain't the funniest, it goes, the laughter goes, aha, aha, aha. And then I do that with the <laughs> subjects. So that way the set just right. constantly go like this. And I ain't trying to let right. you breathe. So 
Why are they laughing at that when right. here I come again? Yeah, and boom, boom, boom. And then once you mm -hmm. know where you at with the joke, you allow mm -hmm. yourself right. uh, able to ad lib on it. Because sometimes I would ad lib on a joke mm -hmm. and end up keeping it. Because I was talking about a dude with a ball spot mm -hmm. trying to cover it up with some braids and stuff where it looked like a tree <laughs> on the beach. But, but, then, <laughs> but then I saw a dude that had that patch right here. I said, this brother got him a double ball spot. It's, it stopped and started and just say hey. <laughs> Double and then that went, and a lot of my stuff be like me roasting people. Like I was, I'm good at yeah. like you know that was my thing. I tell you, so I was a king of that. So I would like take three roasts and, and add them together. So mm -hmm. I took that yeah. one dude with the braid, and mm -hmm. then I put that with the dude with that, and then I had another one. I say, yeah. and all you brothers who hairline is starting to recede is only so far back you can let it go. If your hairline, <laughs> even with your ear, <laughs> cut the rest of that stable one. I like the barber don't even know what's that. I said, Bob didn't know how to line this brother. I said, he just do the whole haircut from behind, and I pull the chair back and out. Like he never go in front of this dude, the whole haircut. But it was me roasting the dude at the at the barber shop. So I put all three of them together and said, You ever see the dude? Boom, boom, boom. And then I got the one on the woman, she just gonna squeeze the ponytail, you know, this much piece of look like a, uh, and, and and then like when I already know what it looked like in my mind. So when I start saying it on stage. Something else will pop in. I'd be like, look, you just gonna squeeze your opponent. Mm -hmm. Look like a bag of cush. You know, in my head, I'm thinking of anything small that's out of place yeah. right. that uh, don't match it, that, uh, that ain't supposed to be mm -hmm. there. And right. then I might throw that in there and people laugh harder than the first part. It's a keeper. Right. And then so that way you see wow. the joke next year, they'd be like, damn. So a lot of guys are telling me, man, mm -hmm. I, it seems like you're doing the same shit, but it's always funny because right. it's steady growing. Right. And by the time that joke is groomed, it's a 20 minute bit. Now I got 20 minutes just on my mama. And then I got 20 mm -hmm. on my father and then the brother, you know, so it just grows. Yeah. And then I move them in mm -hmm. and out, you know, depending on which one I've been doing. Because Bernie Mac taught me this. He said, a lot of people, you go to the shows, a lot of people want to see some of your stuff you know for. Like if right. I do a show uh, and I'd be like, I can't do that. That's an old joke. And then after the show, a dude be like, man, why you ain't do them uncles dancing, man? I brought my dude to see them. You just right, do right. that, them damn dancing. I'm right. telling them yeah. that. So I learned to to keep the old with the new. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. Bernie always told me, you always want the crowd. You know, a lot of young comics had a problem. But when they get a good rush like that, Bernie say, leave. He's like, because you always want the crowd wanting to see you again. But the younger comics, when they get that rush, they want to give them everything in their repertoire. That's what make them step over, you know, go over and be like, they, they, cause they feel that rush feels so good. They'd be like, Hey, and what about this? And they didn't add a whole nother 10 minutes to their show, you know, and then it, 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 it could go down. Ah, uh, so wow. I'm learning so much. If you are a comedian out there and just, just starting, you can free information. Thank you that for that tip. You, you asked everything I was going to ask about. Um, oh, okay, so, but thank you. I mean, we have, we have, we're sitting in front of like, a legend and so it's hard to get good information i'll say or that that can help you as a comic um yeah, course, see course. i don't be thinking i'm a legend but people say that because i did so many tv shows or 34 but but you are i just there. try to stay humble i stay modest because of my yeah. backgrounds i grew up in a right. 16 you know robert taylor projects nine brothers and sisters oh, yeah you know and we called it robert taylor illinois because it's 16 floors 10 apartments mm -hmm. on each floor 10 people in every family that's a village and it's 30 buildings and then we moved from there to Inglewood. So my hour right. special is called Mike Epps presents Kenny Howe from the projects to the ghetto. Wow. Back mm -hmm. to Inglewood. They just the projects right. laying down. So I stay mm -hmm. humble and that's why I'm always, wow. I don't be, I don't get on the TV thing. I, I would sit with you all day. My wife, people right. be walking up to me, man, why well, I know you from, ain't you you? I'd be like, uh, I just leave them <laughs> hanging. I start taking them everywhere. Yeah. We play ball together. They be like, yeah, and my wife be like, kill him. I'd be like, I'm a comedian. That's what that's I told you that was him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. But I, you know what? That that I'm sorry, Tony. Go ahead, babe. Go ahead. Go ahead, Rich. Oh, um, no, but that, that leads me to, to one of the main questions I wanted to ask you, King. Like me, I you know, I I'm a I'm a fan, right? I've tried comedy, Appreciate you it. know, and I'm a fan of comedy. Tanya's a comedian. Oh yeah. Definitely. Um and I look at the history, you know, I look at Richard, I look at Red Fox. Um, but a person that often pops in my head is you. When I think of Chicago comedy, right? Because I'm very familiar right. with Chicago comedy. Um, I think of uh, you know, Bernie Mac, of course. My big brother. Right. 
Yeah. Right. And there, there's there's a slew of other ones. I didn't actually know that Corey Holcomb was from Chicago. I found out later. Oh, yeah. Corey come up under me. Co Corey right. started, you know, mm -hmm. a few years after me. Yeah, but when I when I think of Chicago comedy, of course I think of Bernie Mac. But then one of the star players in Chicago comedy I think of is yourself. And I always it. ask myself, right? And I know we, we had a conversation prior to this. Yeah. I always ask myself, somebody like Kenny Howell, who has so many signature jokes, just like Bernie Mac, right? Right. Um, why isn't he given more props, more credit? Because I could name off 10 signature jokes that you've done. I know the, he was hitting me on the, the phone. I was like, damn, I don't even remember that one. I'm gonna do that one. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I like and and I always ask myself, right? And and I always wondered that with with, with, with show business. Like I, I'm like, yeah, why isn't this dude giving more props? Because you and Bernie are some key players that put Chicago comedy where it's at now. Right. The first you the was first in, you was in involved film. In that. TV, yeah, the first form the film, the first four of us to film TV from Chicago. It was Bernie Mac and Adele did the mm -hmm. first season of Def Jam. Then the second season, it was me, Bernie Mac, Adele, and then they and George Wilbur. So right. we was the first ones to from Chicago to ever do, you know. But we I yeah. had another big brother, Evan Lani Nalel. He was with Bernie, and he was actually mm -hmm. doing stuff with Oprah before Bernie, but they was buddies. So they was like my right, big brother. Right. I would come home, Bernie would mm -hmm. be at my house, and he was teaching me little stuff. I would ten things funny about this clock home, and you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but and then after yeah. him, you know, then me and Tony Schofield, we come up. Then Damon Schofield. Williams, who's out, and then all of us would like mm -hmm. here come Corey and Jeff B, and then yeah. he's even you know the guys you starting to see yeah. now. D Ray come up on the uh, Damon. All of us, Godfrey, who's out there, and all of them. Yeah. So that's we have a brotherhood for this stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's why I right. don't like uh, if I see a younger comic, you know, we we always talk to him or we'll let him, you know, we 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 look out mm -hmm. for each other, you know, just like right, that. Right. Corey just called me to to come do something with him. He's like, they talking about the kings of Chicago comedy. Mm -hmm. they, I don't know none of them. I don't want Kenny on there. So he's like, you right. and Sco got to do it, you know, for upcoming theater show. And that's what I'm saying. So, like, that's and that's what I'm saying because you're one of the key players in bringing. Chicago comedy to where it's at now. You Adele, definitely Adele, definitely yeah. Bernie. But I'm all. But I always said, why aren't they giving Kenny Howell more props? He was there from the beginning. I saw him. You know what I'm saying? I witnessed. The, the, the I business witnessed is called show business. It's ninety percent business and ten percent. Yeah, I mean, because you get to a certain level, you never know who around you, and they have a certain type. You notice they only let one black dude make it at a time. Right. You know, that, as far as the, right. the, the, the top dog. Right, you know, right. and then the rest of them they can eat around, but then it's a right. level you get to where you know they want you to do things, or you got to change yeah. who you are, your personality got to change, they the want you to dress on. a certain way. Yeah, right. I gotta be me. So I tell the comics, you know, just be oh, yeah. yourself. You 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 come in with me for the funny and who I am. That's what, what they write the sick the most sitcoms that work is the guy being himself in a character. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so yeah. look at Bernie, and that's Bernie would even sit down and explain yeah. his to you. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. that's what sells. Right. But you know, it, it's a lot of politics yeah. in the game. And you was being yourself on stage. That's Always. what I like and to see about Mike Epps come up under me. Stage. Yeah. And Mike, when he started doing mm -hmm. it, he he won a contest in Indianapolis that Tony Scott was hosting. He came to Chicago, started doing the club click I used to do mm -hmm. that I was hosting. He ended up spending the night with me and staying with me being my little brother, like I was Bernie. So they even called me, you know, when they was shooting Soul Man. Mike was doing the uncles and brothers. They called that, nigga, you know. So you know, mm -hmm. we all we all hang out. We all stay together, and it's just like we had this saying that the person that's gonna give me the million dollars ain't seen me yet, or I will have it. Mm -hmm. So that right. keeps you grinding. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you never yeah. know when your time yeah. comes, cause your time ain't when everybody else is come. You know, God ripening this fruit different. Right. Yeah, you know, so right now that's right. it might not have right. yeah. might not have been ready for what's in store for he got for, for me, but now right. it might be time. Right. right, you know. So I've been at it 20, oh, right. 20 I started mm -hmm. in ninety three. You know, well, I won the I did mm -hmm. the Miller Light like Bernie now. Well, I'm sorry, I'm I'm talking too much. Oh no, not at all, not at all. I'm just so excited. We had to do an hour and do so part two or something. Thirty minutes, so that's why. Um, no, that's know. what I just said. We do an hour and and do part one and two. That's true. See this? I mean, Roll I, your show. I mean, I mean, <laughs> no, I got something to do, girl. I got to get off it now. Half an hour. But, but um, I was going to ask you about um, oh something you just said. Oh, now I just got up. 
got off topic. My ADAD kicked in. <laughs> my ADHD. My parents no. tried to tell me I could <laughs> so wrong enough. Um, I'm trying to get to mine right now. Hey, uh, I, I, hey. yeah, I want to hit that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> is there is there any topic in comedy that uh, that you think is off limits? Nah, it's not supposed to be. It's okay. like I remember when I was a kid watching it, you know, and I heard Richard Pryor say was talk about he can make anything funny, any place, anywhere, this and that. And that's the confidence you gotta have because that's what your gift is. Most of this is your point of view. It's just like you could be around a bunch of comics and all of y'all can see the same thing, but different stuff will come out. You know, so you don't have to buy it. Like perfect example, uh, it it was me, uh, uh, Dion Cole, Tony Schofield, Tony Roberts. I think Cedric was with us. This back in the, the All Jokes Society, then when our younger comics, B. Cole, had been on the road with us. So, you know, all of us was single back. We like single back. They was like, man, did you get with old girl last night? We like, no, but boy, I milked her. We kissed all night and we just started slamming them. I was like, what? I so y'all just kissed her and kissed all night? I was like, I I been to the room to smell like sex. It smelled like spit. And then Dion was like, yeah, they in there blessing the scope bottles to all my niggas with ginger bodies. Then Tony Roberts was hit in like, yeah, it's just empty comics jars all around the room. And we just, everybody was throwing one in. And then at the end, we was like, one of y'all going to keep that? You know? And then Cedric did it on wow. stage that night, <laughs> wow. but he didn't say he was going to do it. Yeah. But, you know, so you can be around yeah. a group of comics. It's just like you, your natural gift going to come out. And that's what I tell the comics like you when you was talking about how they, your appearance and this and that. If it make you go into your mold, mold. But I try to look at the crowd like I'm looking at my friends. And okay. if and if I'm struggling with a crowd, I right. tell all the young comics, if you're not getting laughs, that, that silence is hard to make you start thinking instead of being. And I tell them, just focus on one person in that audience that's like this with you. Everybody else might be like this, but if that one like that, zero in on him until you get your energy back. And then laughter is contagious. And then when the people see that, your confidence, they'll give you you and then you anybody can say a joke or whatever you say. You want the people to know this funny reason why this funny is because it came out her mouth, the way she said it, the way mm -hmm. she did it. The you are who you are because you were born this person, and that's what makes wow. you funny like everywhere like without trying. You have to learn to develop that on that stage. Where it's like mm -hmm. it was like you in your college dorm room and you walk in the room, but like, oh here she goes, she feel the cloud. That's how you right. go on that, you know. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's that's gold. That is such gold. I, I hope some of my comic friends are listening in. Uh, so so um, I told you, Red Fox. Uh, you remind me of Red Fox so much. Uh, I want to know: Have yeah, you got me. any Favorite. any sitcom offers or any you know any movie deals coming up that that we need to know? Yeah, about? yeah. Actually, I got a movie coming up called Back Together Again. It's it's sort oh. of like these all these kids uh, separated from their mom. You know, and went to different cities. They all was ignorant, and then uh, they end up uh, finding out she built them some money thirty years later after they all into who they are. You know, and uh, wow. it was a guy. Uh, uh, yeah, and then uh, you know, I was supposed to go shoot the, sh the Shaws, the Upshaws with Mike. Uh, I got an hour special on YouTube that he produced called Mike Epps Business Kenny Alfano. Probably sit okay. together. I got a, a YouTube channel. We just restarting because the other one kind of crashed. It's called Kenny House 705. And I'm gonna be putting all the old stuff. I just I went in my closet and I saw all like the 30, 40 TV shows, the, the stuff I did on stage. I'm just gonna just start throwing stuff on that channel, you know. Wow. But the other stuff I want y'all to watch is go pull up this one called Kenny Howell on, uh, at the Comedy Cube that just came out. We got like 100, 120,000 at the Comedy Cube. And basically, we're trying to, we, yeah, we get to a certain amount of numbers, we, you know, we it goes to Hula. We're trying to shop it to Hula. So, okay, so everybody who watching, yeah. hit it and share it. Even if you don't watch it, just hit it and yeah. share it. Okay. Yeah, we definitely, gonna, we definitely want to promote and share that, definitely. Yeah. So, sure. you know, sure. I, I talk all day if y'all want me to. We can go as long as you want to. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? I, you know what? Don't you don't you hate like you come yeah. on stage and you be like, damn, I forgot to throw that one in there. You said that. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It happens yes. all the time. Yeah. So, all yeah. The time. so that happens but on I, that happens on interviews. Know, yes. But you know, you know what amazes me about you, Kenny? And I, and, I, and I wanted to ask you this. I always said if I got a chance to talk to Kenny, uh, I, I want to hear it because I could always assume, but growing up in a place as rough as Chicago, like we all know right. around the world, Chicago is known around the world, it's rough, right? Right, um, and I got family out there, right? Growing up in a place that rough, 
how did you stay so like like you brighten up people's day? We turn on Kenny Howell's Howell's yeah, but I want no punk either. Look, this dude, my, no, 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 that's yeah, what I'm saying. I was like, like I want no punk. Like, my, my nickname is Truck, which is my cat. That's what they call yeah. me. The people that know me, that grew up with me, that's yeah. they. What up, Truck? You know, that, and it was just yeah. somebody called me that one day. I was a kid. It stuck. You know, I play middle linebacker. Right. I, you know, I play three sports. See, the mm -hmm. thing is, Chicago, if you play sports, they won't mess with you. Or a lot of game bangers play yeah. sports, but they recruited each other. But it, it wasn't like no game. Right. It, you know, it's be your buddies. It'd be, be more like family. The, the violence would come. Yeah. You know, these guys would, on both sides would network with each other. Disciples, black gangsters. Right. They would, all of them would, would network mm -hmm. with each other until something happened where it messed up. And then that might right, start right. a war. But other than that, they wasn't about total violence these these young guys they they took all the structures these guys are shooting at their friends now you know what i'm saying so yeah and that's but see, back and that's then i had like, a lot of brothers yeah. and my father was the craziest nigga i knew and and all the, <laughs> all, the, all, 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 all the bangers were took to him he was like they got from yeah. he was like a boxing of a ring but he worked every day yeah. he grinded out so they looked at Grind that he out, was yeah. like strong to them even in the projects and yeah. over there. my father and my mother was everybody's parents our house mm. was always called headquarters and okay. projects and over on, on 73rd okay. and Inglewood on Winchester. That kind of answers uh, my question. Yeah, that's Park. what I that's yeah. what I was asking. Yeah, that, that's what I was asking yeah. because like you're such a versatile dude. Like you're and I want to add this. You play this sports. is what I want to add real quick though on the other on, on a major mm -hmm. tip. Reason mm -hmm. reason why yeah. I brought my dad up is because like another reason why I, I might not be at a certain level to certain people in comedy is when you go to Hollywood, like Bernie was like, you go out there, they don't, they don't want what they, can, they have. But most thing you don't have is a family. I, all I ever wanted was a family. So I raised you know, my four kids. I watched them grow up. I go out there, stay a little bit, but I, I, I had the whole real life with them. And I, you know, and that was more important in my career. Everybody I know, that went out there and stayed, most of them end up getting divorced once or twice, or they just not with their wife and kids. Me and my exactly. wife been together 24 years. Right. Wow, Woo 24. Right. That says a lot about yeah. both of and, and, and guess what? She, she's still married. I ain't. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say. Hey, she hate, she hate when I do that joke. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> That's not yeah. funny. But that was, yeah, that, you, you answered my question. Bro. Cause, because I always yeah, saw you as like this important. versatile dude. Yeah. yeah. No, I um I like the fact too, and that you actually had your mom and your dad. That's that's yeah, uh you that's know, a, according to a, American media, that's difference. like oh, what you have your mama and your papa and the I know, right? What? So I, yeah. I'm glad that you can kill because they family. tried to destroy the family, you know. Yeah. They they have to destroy the family, and the family is the foundation, that's what the Bible we focus on, you know. Of, of everything. So, yep, you're right. My of, family was right. more important than my jokes. Good for you. Well, that mm -hmm. I think um yeah. I think God does everything in time when he's ready. And yeah. um, I think it's definitely, you know, it's coming up. It's coming up. Your number is about to be. Oh, yeah. Boom, plugs. Yeah. There it is. I've been, you know? he trained me for 20, 28, 28 years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To us, it already is. But to, you know what I mean when I say, yeah. Uh, yeah. say that. I'm talking the TV. Because a lot of times, too, I think, um, do, now, do you write? That's what I meant. Do you produce and write? Or not yet. Yeah, or... I I write for others. A lot of guys like I'm I'm a, I'm real good with punchlines. You know, okay. like my best friend Tony Schofield, he's good at writing scenarios out. So he will come up with the perfect scenario, and I would take it over the cliff, uh -huh. and we would decide on you know who gonna keep it or whatever. You know, nice. Like we nice. And, and it's just and it's just like this. Like I'm a, I got to do this one if I got time. It's real quick yeah. joke. Yeah, but yeah. we it was a New Year's Eve, right? And both <laughs> of us was in the car, and we had to show downtown. So. We, we in the car wash and we we like man you know what we start talking about what we gonna quit i was like nigga, i, I ain't getting high i ain't for i'm a slow he was like boy you know soon's the countdown five four three two one happy new year yeah man where that blunt at so right after that he was like i was like oh i got one i was like yeah man i'm going back to school i'm gonna get my no i, I did a fat girl i was like you know what you know uh I ain't finna eat no more. I'm going on the Jenny Craig on New Year. I'm, you know, I'm finna get down to size. Countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year's. You know, have something to drink. Girl, you know, I can't drink on an empty stomach. Wear them wings. Set that turkey out. Wear that breast full of, you know. And then we always do three, right? So we kept trying to come up with a third one. And then Tony was like, oh, I got it, kitty. He said, I got the third one. 
So the third one was, was, hey, man, I'm going to get me a GED. I'm going back to school. You know, I dropped out. I'm going to get my education. I'm finna, you know, I'm going to get back right. I'm going to school. I'm going to be something. Five, six, <laughs> seven, eight, man. New Year's ain't going to never get here. Nine, you know. So he did the dumb guy <laughs> counting backwards. And we just put the three together and worked them. And then, like, he, he like, okay, he do it on New Year's Eve every year. So that's wow. a 29-year-old joke that we wow. just did like that. That is amazing. Right. It must be yeah, nice. Right. That's great. Y'all creative, man. Yeah. No, that's that's yeah, uh, it just was a natural blend, you know. That's gold. That's absolute gold. So so what um what do you want to leave as your legacy? I mean uh, you know, you know what? To, say to me I'm soon, but I'm just to saying, me, you what? don't yeah, to to me, I can't plan plan what a legacy is. It's just certain things I want to achieve. Right. You know, I want to hit a movie. I want to, I want to, you know, do something great in a movie or whatever. Right. And, you know, like a sitcom, a nice character, because I want to just get into, you know, not, not live stage, but playing with a character and, you know, doing how they do this right. and that. And then just going on a major tour where, with all my brothers, you know, brothers and sisters in comedy, where I could set something up where everybody can get to see those who they don't get to see. Right. And it's so many friends. Like one of my buddies, I got on his shirt, A.G. White. He's from New York. Oh, and what? it's like, yeah, because we comics love each other. Yes. You know, it's certain comics. I got favorite comics, you know, that I, you know, and I'm one of the guys that they be like, he's a comics comic. When I go up, comics like, oh, this nigga finna say something crazy. You know, D.C. <laughs> Curry, Corey. Corey definitely one of them dudes. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So you, you, you never know what's going to come out the mouth. So I want to, like, put together a Legends comedy tour. Oh, that each sounds show, great. Yeah, each wow. show got a different group. Like the guys that was out there, Talon is a legend, yes. Joe Kelly, Ross yes. State, and all them guys, you Capone. Then we got a crew in Chicago, mm -hmm. you know, with all these guys, you know, George Wilburn, Dude, David Williams, us and that. Atlanta yeah. got a crew. Detroit Dude. got a crew. The Midwest got crews. Do it like, um, you know how Comic-Con is? So instead, it would just be your, it would be your, your tour and well i had put i had put one together back in 2002 and i've been talking to some guys like a lot of dc comics is hilarious and one of them is my boy chris thomas you know and uh me and him kind of thought of the legends idea so we might just go forward with it and, and try to put it together you know we can make it yeah. happen we all been in the game 25 30 years we know exactly. the business in and we know exactly. all of that yeah you know, it's just a matter of brothers coming together exactly Put your resources together. Yeah, I think we're gonna go do down it. city to city. It can go down. Uh, right, and then once we come through, then just like when Def Jam was out, they would bring. It was two groups. Like the first group was like Bernie group was Ber uh, Bernie Mac, Kid Capri, Dale Givens, uh, Bill Bellamy. Uh, they had Arnaz sometimes, Teddy Carp, whatever. And then I had a, came with the second group. It was me, Ricky Harris, Downtown Tony Brown, Joe Torrey. Okay. Uh, uh, simply marvelous. How you doing? How your mama doing? You know. Yeah, so after, yeah. after this, marvelous. after our group would hit a city, you know, after burning them come to uh, say for instance New York, and then a month later we come, in. and they just that's how Jeff mm -hmm. Jam was running their group. So everybody was seeing different crews every month, and wow. that's what I kind of want to yeah. do with all the veteran comics because you know they looking for new talent, and that's fine. I want them to have theirs. But guys like us that's been in this game for a long time, we got family, we got bills, we got kids in jail. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, but we got real life situations. Like if I had a house fire yeah. and I'm living in somebody else's house while every day trying to get mine get together. So yeah, I, yeah. all that stuff is, is real life. And if I can get a lot of these veteran comics in rotation where we moving around, people would love it, though, because you get yeah. to see all your old guys, mm -hmm. all, you know, four or five of them, you know, once, once, twice a month. Yeah. Yeah, well, it would be awesome. And y'all are still relevant. Like, people still know who y'all yeah. are. True you that. You know what I'm saying? And and that's Facts. why I asked that question, because I kind of feel like people like you, especially people like you, Adele Givens, y'all have given yeah. so much. Go ahead. Y'all yeah. have given, given, given so much that I think y'all deserve something now. That's how yeah. I feel. Yeah. yeah. Well, everything goes in circles, right? Bible says right. so. Might be our time now. That's right. It's, it, yeah. it, it, I'm going to claim it. Especially after I'm going to claim day. it. People are thirsty, thirsty for comic. Yeah, comic. they they look in and they beg and plead, and so real, I especially I after what they're going through. Yeah, real talk. No, you have to make that happen. Definitely. I mean, I keep thinking in my head of dialogue the last few weeks, and it's always come back to something like what we're talking about. So yeah. make it happen, yeah. make it happen. Mm -hmm. um, I <laughs> thank you so much. Um, you got it. Rich, did you have any more questions? Uh, because 
I see you're very popular. Oh, uh, no, I just wanted to know. Um, yeah, right. You make any uh, money? Um, no, you make any money for me? Ask if uh, Kenny had, huh? I'm joking. Did you make any I just money? wanted to ask Kenny if, if, if he had anything else he wanted us to promote any more upcoming events. And uh, I also wanted to ask Kenny if he's going to write his book. I think you should write your book because you, you got said an amazing that, story. You? Yeah, coming out of Chicago that, and surviving It's Chicago. a lot of stuff we talked about yeah. on the phone that we didn't get to talk about on here. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so maybe I'll come back and do a part two. Because that's your movie. I'm just saying. Uh, say that, Sister Sledge. I'm just saying. If you need someone to help you, <laughs> get that, you I'm with I'm that. I'm with yeah. that. I write screenplays. I'm about that. to make it really, really happen now. So, that's what's up. We don't claim I like that. to yeah. focus on people and their gift and bring whatever out for them. So that's... Right, right. I'm just saying. Because I ain't going to do it. You know what he had to do to get me up for this? I uh, know. If you write the book. <laughs> no, y'all was on it, man. I, I know I, what it is. I know what it is. Kudos. Y'all was, because comics can get lazy, you know, and then you got other stuff going on. Yes. You know, I, I actually sat out on the plan for that. I said, man, they putting a lot in it. And, and, and I can't play, I, you know, I can't fake them out or say I'm going to do it later. That right. This one's going to be something great. Right. You know, because y'all put the, y'all putting it in. You know, and I'm comfortable. So I'm telling you, this going to turn. I felt that. I was like, man, they putting the effort in. Because when, you know, everybody was doing podcasts, doing the doing the thing when when, when they was on lockdown. Right. But, you know, to, to now to be able to do it and watch it grow, you know, y'all put the energy in it. Like, like calling the love and, hey, how you doing? What you thought? Richard, you know, yeah. Richard's the best booker ever. He's the best booker. So it make you feel bad if I said I was going to do something <laughs> and then and then all I'm doing is laying upstairs. <laughs> oh, man. Damn. <laughs> man, go down here and do this shit. No Look, yeah, I got to go down here and do funny, this man. shit. Hey, I'm going to tell them, nigga, I'm going to see if they can do me next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> nah, man, you, you know, know what? If I would have missed like, this Tuesday, I would have been sick, sick for a week. Like, oh, I let them niggas. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but you know what it is? Kenny, we just got that much love for you. And, like, I man, feel, so you know, good. I talk to a lot of comedians. You know, I'm friends with right. a lot of comedians. And one of the things they, that, that hurts my heart is that, Y'all make us laugh, y'all bring us joy, and often y'all don't get nothing back. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Don't get it back. And especially, you know what? Especially because look, this mm -hmm. is why I actually this is my love of comedy. When I first started doing it, any interview they asked me what was the reason I did comedy. And growing up, you know, I used to feel like I'm lonely in the crowd because it's me. But I got nine brothers and sisters. But it's always somebody around. I never was intimate with me. But I would always look at people and see pain. So this is was my mm -hmm. motto. I was like, if I if if I can make you smile for one minute while you forget that pain, right. then you made me forget my pain. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So whatever we both carry, right. if you're carrying something right. that's really killing you, and I can take that away from you for a minute or two, mm -hmm. and you you like this, and you ain't, and that's mm -hmm. gone, man, right. man, all oh, man gone. You so speaking my heart that's right now. Right. Oh that's my what God. it is, though. Yeah, you know, yeah. I I tear up when I get yeah. to that. To, you know, when I say that. I do yeah, this for yeah. free. I would, wow. you know, because I, I that's my that's my joy right there. That's right. my payday. When, yeah. when when I see you right. for that one moment, you forgot that problem. Because some people can care that problem to it start breaking the insides down. Because pain is something else. It's and a true. lot of black people, we didn't went over hard lives. You know, both of y'all grew up in hard lives. Yes. So you know, y'all yeah. yeah. ain't no punk to pain. You know what I'm right. saying? Nope. Right. So, right. You know, yeah. it, that, it's no, deep. You, right. you know, like nowadays, people are. Damn all that toughness, you know. You you toughness gonna kill your ass. You know, let that shit out. <laughs> <I don't care. laughs> you know, like right? on that world cook steak, it's gonna kill you. Yeah, no. For real. Right. So if I can get it up at you, then I ain't got no reason to have it up in me either. Yeah, no, that's a right. that's a good right. uh that's a good uh, that's one I love that I, wisdom. Yeah, I got in the conversation. Yeah, that's how I feel, man. That's the reason yeah. why I do it. Yeah, if you can make somebody the money, laugh, the money is not. a blessing too, but damn, I would do this for free on the corner. Like yeah. I did, like I always I did before, before I went professional. <laughs> hey, God, by any means necessary is what I said. Yeah. You know, I, I I admire a lot of comics. That some, some comics like right now uh, who I know, you know, Kim DeShields, uh, she always yeah. said doing a show yeah. somewhere in the park and somewhere. I was like, girl, like you are really yeah. I don't know how many. I th I said you're gonna get the record for the most shows, even during. <laughs> the you cannot. Yeah, stop. that grind is crazy, right? You know, 
that grind. She want him something, boy. She, yeah. she got to get that. <laughs> run away from, she she sits it. still. She going to think about it. all the shit she been through. Yeah, <laughs> shit, I'm going over here. I, I do a show in the great house there for her. I, ain't <laughs> I, <laughs> I have to get my. Like I, I tell people that they're like, man, what would you? What, what? I said, man, I do anything. I do a Greyhound bathroom as long as you treat me right. Right. When, where, and how? You're Let's a legend. Hey, yeah. I'm That's the only it. time. <laughs> That's the only time. I'm like <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> no. There um, you go. Well, I appreciate you so much. I know you. Uh, you nah. have a life, uh, and we Thank can't you keep so forever. much. Kenny. Um, nah, I appreciate y'all, yeah. man. Call me yeah. back for another one. You know? I, you're welcome back anytime. Yeah, we soon as that thing pops brother. up and that station calls you, please let That's us know. Up. We'll get the word out because um, oh, yeah. I want to. I, I want to get it before it gets that. You know what I'm saying? This one got the feeling that y'all shit gonna go viral. I, I got that feeling. I can feel it. Uh, y'all gonna well, be all right. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I'm gonna be all right. Appreciate you. For real yeah. talk. Yeah. yeah. Any last? And advice? you got our support, Kenny. Yeah, definitely, hundred percent. Yeah. Advice to comics. Yes, this is what I tell you. This is this yeah. how you can this is how you can tell a true comic instead of these internet cats and stuff like that. They to me they funny, but they not you born a comic. So this is what I tell people. I say I ask the guy, I say if you ever played ball when you was little at the park, I say when you go there and play basketball that day, you know, and you win that day, you feel good, you can't wait to get back the next day. I said that's the person who go on stage and make a person laugh. I said, but then you go that next day and you lose every damn game. Are you going to quit playing basketball? No, mm. you're going to go home with that same rage that, damn, I ain't going to lose tomorrow. I, I tell them, I say, ride that feeling. So ride that feeling of what it felt like to succeed, but right. also ride that feeling of what it feel like to lose so you can grind. Either way, you're not going to quit. And that's what a true comic is to me. I'm not one of them cats that tell me, oh, I could do that. Yeah, I'm funny sometimes. Oh, I could do that. No, you born this. This is in you. This right, is who you right. are. This is your grind. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, you're gonna be this mm -hmm. even if you wasn't paid. Mm -hmm. And right. that's that's why I tell the young yeah. comics this that's how you can find out if you love it. Because mm -hmm. the the mm -hmm. the failure of it makes you want to get back on the stage. Exactly. You know, if I, if I didn't do good last night, I was like, oh, I'm I, yeah. I got him next week. I, 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 you said that, that whole yeah. week I'm yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, and then once you like, get him, you like planning. yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then once you get you like, I got the ass. Ooh, wait the next week, wait the next week. You know, yes. either way, you 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 can't right. wait to get back up there. Yes. yes. I, I had yep. my first right. uh, my right. first bomb was uh I, at, I was at a, a the basement of uh Broadway. Uh well I call it a right. bomb, but it was one guy particularly. Mm -hmm. This, one of them uh, shows friend, that you weren't happy with. Guy, just one guy. Everybody else one, one <laughs> guy was sitting here like this. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was like, are you modeling <laughs> or something? What's going on with the face? And he was, I mean, he was, and I knew it looked like he lived like somewhere near my town or something, but it was all the way in the city. Right. So I was like, I don't know. But he was looking at me really nasty. And it was so uncomfortable. So, I was like, that was my third year, only like my third year in. Oh, yeah, it's good. But look at this, though. Now, two things. What if he, what if he thinking about something that just happened to him at the house, his wife, and like, mm, 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 and you touching on it, you know what I'm saying? That's or what, I, what if he what just, I mean. what if he too judgmental, yeah. and he ain't the one that's supposed to take you out of your thing for the rest of the people? He's one person, you know. So don't fuck with. So I'll make his ass part of the show. That's what I, I like, did. Da, da, da. I was like, oh damn, Stone Face even laughed. Look at all, you know, you know. I was like, I, I was like, look at tight T-shirt. You laughing at you know? Tears ass. Uh, he looked like a strong <laughs> ass gummy <laughs> bear. Yeah, I no, I had, to, I had to bring him. His hair was like he could cut me through with a knife, and he was the only <laughs> one. Everybody else was laughing. He was the only one, and I mean, when I tell you, he was staring at me like he was like yeah. right there. See, I was like, you Ooh. took that home, right? Yeah. You took that home. No, it made actually, you grind, I got him. I got him. I got him. See, I was like, oh, it made oh, you right. want to get back there and get him, right? That's exactly what that, See? and that was the best See? part. I was like, wait a minute, maybe I like. Him. See. Because now I want to go back and rewrite everything. There you go. So could do it even better. So, there yeah. you go. Mm -hmm. See. Yep. Yeah. See. Exciting stuff, and I and I'm willing to take my time too. That's another thing. Some people yeah. want to rush. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna do seven mics tonight and no, ten. No, I mean patience. Patience. I learned that listening to some Red Fox jokes because he'd be like, you know, uh, some people don't eat pork. They don't eat beans. This and that because they want to live. You know, they give up all that good stuff, and he just <laughs> pause and go. You gonna feel like a damn fool laying in a hospital dying from nothing, you know. But just that part, <laughs> or he just right. just That's like cool. before he cursed, <laughs> he'd be like, he was talking about how funky something was. He was like, it was funky in there, 
fuck it. You know, it was just the way he said it, like like how my father said it. That's why yeah. it just comes out of me like that. You know, and I actually had a couple of vocal yeah. surgeries, uh, you know, because of my vocal cords really? were straining them. Yeah, talking loud and hard. Like my wife, like, dude, you can't whisper. Uh. I mean, look at her big head right. ass. <laughs> 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 Yo, Kenny is funny. We gotta, I'm, I'm like, we may go for Yo, you. I'm so glad we, I'm so glad we brought you to the okay. show, Kenny. Uh, I had fun, man. This I'm so was glad fun. that you showed back. that you came to the show, man. Uh, and now, a, now I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be double watching everything you do because I'm gonna try to figure out, uh, write something for you and see. I, I'm oh try. hell yeah, girl! I got something for Steve Harvey. I know I can get something for you. Oh yeah, girl. But like call me right. and we gonna give you writers. We'll I'm put gonna, writers credits on it and everything. Yeah, you know why? Because it. because some people uh, understand. Some people have a better gift for writing. Like my boy James Hanna was a stand up comedian, but he he ended up writing. You know, for for Steve Harvey, uh, the Steve Harvey Show, and a few other oh. TV shows before he passed. Now he was a little fat, yeah. chubby, kind of yeah. dark skinned dude. He was the original. I called mm -hmm. him the strong ass gummy bear, the originally. <laughs> but he would have jokes that <laughs> yeah. his and he talked kind of proper, so the, the jokes would be so funny, but they would be fit for somebody like me. Like one of his jokes would say, uh, "Yeah, I used to go in a, a home for battered women and go." Where the fuck is my wife at? I'm gonna kill that bitch when I get here. I'm like, <laughs> you know, a, a gummy bear can't say that. He ain't threatening nobody. Right, right, but right. A, a big dude with a raspy voice, like, what the hell? You know, and he say right, he right. just do that for fun, walk into a home with battered women. It's dark comedy, but it's something ignorant that I might walk in the room and don't, don't know I even said it. I won't holler it out, but I'd be like, damn, she looks like she got her ass whooped. And then, oh, they be like, it's battered women, Kenny. Oh, shit. <laughs> Still, that's something mm. I might do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah, she she's supposed to be in here. <laughs> See, and that's something my father would say. That's how my father would talk. Like we in a battered yeah. home, and I and I'm like, oh damn, she like fucked up. It's like she's a battered woman, Kenny. And my father was like, well, right. yeah, she's supposed to be in here. And that's how my father. Was, that's that's how old school. That's like, that's how. I talk. swear to God, and I would be in tears. Oh my God. Well, you get it from you get it from that DNA, so that's a good thing. We're yes, we're blessed to have you. We're very blessed. I appreciate to have it. You. Um, and uh, again, anything you have going on, please hit me up. We'll be more than happy yeah. to have you on any time, or for just to promote anything you have, whatever it is. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm, gonna, yeah. I'm gonna stick with y'all, man. Y'all gonna be yeah, all right. Yeah. Well, I can feel yeah. it. I can feel and it. Tell Adele. Tell Adele. Adele Givens. We want to. Yeah, I meant to too. do that. I supposed to get in touch with you, but you know, I told you my son got three uh, seventeen oh, yeah. misdemeanors. They gonna lock his ass up one day. <laughs> <laughs> let's hope we got twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. He gonna have to play like he was on drugs or something, there, cause they ain't letting you go with that many, <laughs> <laughs> that many <laughs> misdemeanors. Yo, Kenny. <laughs> Out here, well, we appreciate you so much. We appreciate you so much. Yeah, and, I have um, fun, man. I just, I just like talking. <laughs> well, we're gonna, um, we're gonna end I because, uh, I hope, okay. um, I don't want to get you late for whatever is next. And Rich, I know you're on a timeline too. Oh, so, yeah, uh, Rich, we. So yeah, yeah, we got you I outside. Know, exactly. The people in there probably looking at him like, out. "Hey, nigga, they they called your number." <laughs> 58. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yo, I'm, I'm sitting outside head club for men. You know what I'm saying? Oh, right. Okay. That's so crazy. Oh, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. You're you, welcome. Man. Thank you. Thank you Rich, so much for coming, you. Kenny. Don't, don't, oh, don't leave, you, guys. Rich. Don't Thanks, go anywhere. Man. We're just going to end real quick. Um, To my audience okay. out there, guys, uh, who is out there, thank you, Anthony. I see you, Norma, Pat. Uh, and some of the other ones out there, I can't see you because if you're on YouTube, I can't see you. But thank you so much for taking the time. Please like, share, and subscribe. Very important. And, and make sure you go to YouTube. And um, I put it in the chat, the name of the show that Kenny told us to go watch, like, share, yeah. and subscribe. All right? And thank until you. Uh, this will air again Sunday. So make sure you check it out again. Like, share, and subscribe. Okay. Very important. I will check you guys. Kenny, hang out for a minute. Uh, Rich, hang out okay. for one second. All right? Here we go. All right. Yeah.